Have you been thinking about adding graphics to your Zoom calls, but maybe you're a little intimidated or hesitant to try OBS or Ecamm? You want something that's a little bit simpler of an interface so that you can add some graphics. Well, in that case, one that you might wanna consider is mm hmm Yes, that's right. It's called mm hmm It's a little awkward to say, so I'm probably not going to repeat it over and over. And this is something that I heard about a couple of years ago, but just never really went down that road because I already had a solution but recently someone else brought it up and I thought let's explore because this could be a good interim. As far as what it is, this is software you can use that helps you bring graphics into your Zoom call, but also you can use it for local recordings and even sharing recordings. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, let's take a look at a Zoom meeting. So here we're in an, a live Zoom call and I've, I'm feeding mm -hmm into the Zoom call. So I've chosen that as my camera instead of just simply choosing my camera. You can see right now I've got a presentation over my shoulder, which is probably one of the main ways that people will use mm -hmm, but we're going to look at a couple of different options. Now in this example here, if I toggle in the studio, the software, I can change maybe to make myself smaller and have a slide over my shoulder. I can also make the slide the full screen and have myself in a smaller circular window. You also have the option to add custom text over your shoulder. So really quickly, you could just add whatever you want to the screen. You can have a couple of these ready to go. You can also access the Giphy library and add a GIF if you'd like to. That might help whether this is a story or setting the tone or the mood of a meeting. And you can also share screens. So right now I'm sharing a browser and it's got details on the software here over my shoulder. But does it have to be green screen? <laughs> Do I have to have the virtual background? Well, in actual fact, you can also have just your background and you have the option to add graphics. For example, I can add some text using the software and it can be beside me. Now I can't move my camera, so if I, I can't just adjust myself sideways and give myself more room and we'll talk about that later. We also have the option to just use the text to create a simple lower third, and you can add some camera effects if you like, such as this one or this one. So let's actually get into the software itself. So here I have the software. You are looking at the interface, and it is a fairly straightforward interface, and there is a little walkthrough when you first join. I should also note, it is free to download. There are some paid plans, but if you just wanna download it, test it out, see if it works for you, you can also continue to use this for free. It's if you want to add extra recordings or other team features where you'd wanna get into a paid plan. If we look around this interface, you can obviously see me in the center here. And this is your camera preview. And I, right now I'm in a presentation called Demo. So you can create new presentations, you can toggle between different presentations and you have what's called slides. So typically in OBS or in Ecamm, you would be looking at a scene. In this case, they call it slide. You can add new slides and set them up the way you want. If we take a look, I have this one where I turned on a virtual background and then I added, a, this is a slide from one of my slideshows. If you actually go to your media library or upload a file, if you upload a presentation, it will actually create one slide for every slide. It's a little bit <laughs> repetitive of language, but that is how it works. Here with my camera, I can choose to reposition it. I can either do that by dragging the camera this way, or I can also adjust the size. So over here on the side, you can adjust the slider. You can also have a fade if, you, if, you, if it makes sense to be semi-transparent. You can use something called enhance, and you can also rotate, but in this case, I don't think that's really necessary. You can change your backgrounds. I personally really like a clean background, but if you wanted to have a different one, like a studio, or you can also have some that have a little bit of motion happening in the background. Those are all available to you, so you can pick the one that you want. And when it comes to the slides, really you're just setting it up, each one. What do you want to do? Do you want, for example, to have the corner here? This is adjusted by saying, which frame do I want? This one, a circle or a square? So you can quickly switch between those different options. Here, you, there are some limitations on what you can do size-wise. So I, I prefer this option or this option for sizing. 
I personally don't like having me cut off floating in the middle. So I would always have this sort of on the bottom, but you can switch sides and you can adjust the size. If we look at this example here where I've got text, all I did was actually add a text overlay. So up at the top, you can add media, you can share your screen, you can upload a file and you can click add text. So that's what I did here. And if you want, we can edit this text, come in here, change the language, the words, and you get to choose from a few different presets. We've got billboard, classic, glossy, modern. So you can change between these if I wanna to change to modern. And then you can decide there are some limited options for background. Do I want a black background, white background, semi-transparent or clear? I think this one's clear. Depends on what you've chosen as your background, but you can set those up on the side. You can also set them up here. So this one, if we take a look, it's called billboard. This has square edges. So it allowed me to go the full width here. And so this would be really a simple way for you to add some graphics into your calls by just going into the software and adding the text. And if I want, I can just change this message. I could change the background. Maybe I want this to be a white semi-transparent and I say done. Now I've made the update. So it's pretty simple for users to add text, to add a Giphy, whatever you want. You also have the option to add a draw feature. The draw is a bit limited. So if I added this here, it is opaque. I can change the size of it. Oh, I'm drawing now. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I wanted to move it. I can move it around. This would work much better if I have the virtual background and I can move myself to the side. And because right now I can't actually move my camera around. Let's delete this and take a look at the camera. So down here, we've got your, you can have your microphone and your camera here. I've chosen my Camlink 4K. That's my Sony camera. I've actually zoomed this in because my camera is pretty far back. So I zoomed it all the way in, but I can't drag and drop it. So it is going to stay centered when you zoom in, at least as of when I'm recording this video. You have the option to mirror your video. And if you have your own green screen, you can also adjust that. And then finally, if you did want to add a second camera, so maybe you have a shot of your desk or something else you wanna show, then you can actually add another camera, which is a really nice feature. So this is sort of the nuts and bolts. There are also, let's take a look here. I'll just go to a blank one. There is an effect called big hands. This could be fun, but it has its limitations. So if I turn on big hands and I give a thumbs up, it's going to create a big hand. If I do a one, it's going to make a one. Apparently today it doesn't want to be over there. If I do a five, it does a three, but if I do it backwards, it does five. So there, there are a couple of things about this that are a little bit wonky. And also if you're just bringing up your hand, it might make a hand and you don't mean to, but it does have some fun ones. Like if you cover your eyes, it makes some eyes. And if you make a little heart, then it can make a heart. So that can have some fun effects depending on, really depends on your audience. It all, when you're having fun, it always depends on your audience. So I'm gonna turn that back off. But you also saw that I had the ability to do some effects with the camera. So in order to do this, you come over to your effects panel and you can pick which ones. There are different things like the old film, which you saw, we can add some rain. We can also change it from some light drizzle all the way to a downpour. So you can play around with these or you can simply turn them off. Essentially what you're doing is designing what it is you want to have. And you just do this one slide at a time, add your media and set it up. I would say it's very simple to use. And let's get into the idea of who do I think this is right for? Personally, I think that this is a tool that is a nice entry into adding some graphics, especially simple ones. Like if you want to add a lower third or add a sidebar, or if you are someone who really loves a virtual background, maybe you have to hide your background, maybe you prefer to hide your background, then I think you're honestly probably gonna really like this tool. <laughs> Personally, I'm not as big a fan of the virtual background because it is AI trying to decipher who's the human, who's the background. And if we go back to this screen, I'm gonna go back to this screen here and let's go here. See how my microphone is flashing here in the corner? And if I'm, I'm tried to tuck it a bit out of the way, 
And if we, we can see though, as soon as this is where it starts to struggle. So for me, having a microphone in the shot, not, not ideal. And it also is moving. And depending on your hair, if you have really curly hair or if you're moving around the room, you might actually show things. Like here's, here's some of my pillows. It's trying to tell the difference between my pillow and my hand. Obviously, I could go on about that. And my plan is not to, you know, be hard on virtual backgrounds because I honestly do think they have their time and their place. And depending on your setup, it might make a lot of sense. I also think being able to place yourself beside your slides and adjust your size based on the emphasis in your presentation, that's honestly really helpful. So what are some of the things that I would like to see maybe on my wish list? Well, first and foremost, I think it'd be nice if you could do more camera adjustments. Being able to move your camera to the side so that you could have a nice sidebar, I think would be fantastic. One of the other things I would really like to see is if we go back here, you can see all of my slides are along the bottom here. I can't necessarily tell what's what for some of these slides. So the ones with obvious backgrounds, I mean, it's small, but I can see that this is my slide. I can see here that this is the GIF. But if we look over here, I can't tell that this right here, if we kind of hover my mouse, I can't tell that that's old timey film and I can't tell that this is pixelated and I can't tell that this is plain. I just see these. So if you don't have a background, it's actually hard to see the preview. I would love to be able to label these, which does not appear to be an option right now. So that is another thing that is big on my wish list. It's also really important that I drive home the fact that if you are using graphics in Zoom or Teams or any web conferencing software, you are going to be limited by the resolution in the software. Meaning Zoom is often sending out a really low quality image depending on the plan you have. So unless you have HD actually on in your Zoom account, the resolution in your video screen in Zoom is going to be low. So even when you look at the screen and you look clear, what you're sending out is not necessarily going to be clear. This is always a consideration. So I would say, first of all, check your resolution. Second, you can do a screen share in order to share your presentation, but I would also say it is worth having large legible graphics so that even if it's a little bit blurry, everyone can read it. The alternative is if you want to just use this more for creating presentations and recording them, then it seems that the recording resolution looks like it's about 1080. And that's pretty decent for sending your presentation. That's a resolution that all of the things you have on your slides are going to come through in your presentation. Ultimately, I think this is worth checking out if you've been considering a virtual camera or adding some graphics to your Zoom calls. You're not really sure where to start. It is free to use. It works on Mac and Windows. It's not as complicated as OBS. And it can be the type of thing that can start to help you stand out and create a more professional and engaging workshop, webinar, or course.